so i can see people joining in good evening everyone welcome to the today's webinar session brought to you by middlesex university dubai and shiksha study abroad this is an informative session on all the courses available at university before i move further i would like to introduce our presenter today it's mars and brigesha from the middlesex university who look after the recruitment process as well so i have a request for all the student participants who have been joining in please uh, to ask your queries you can always use your q and a box and in order to ask your queries directly you can definitely use your raise hand button and shiksha will help you to direct uh, talk to brigesha or mars direct um, one to one and for that obviously you need to wait for the second half of the session first we are going to go with the presentation and over to you guys all the best thank you so much andresh and thank you so much team shiksha for facilitating this and a very warm welcome to all of our attendees today i'm really happy to see that so many of you have joined uh, you know towards the evening so i'm really delighted to see your interest in uh, you know your higher education and gaining a quality uk degree so um we have a certain format that we're going to try to follow for this event um we have actually a lot of things that we want to discuss with you and i'm sure you have questions that we want to attend to as well so what we're going to do is of course we will be talking about um you know how to join middlesex itself but i will also be talking to you about the pi as a study destination which i think would be a good point to start off with um as far as i'm aware i think most of you are based in india which means that um very few of you might have actually had a chance to visit the pi or would have considered the pi for your higher education uh we've noticed that this trend is changing uh you know very very newly changing now and we're seeing that the pi has become a very popular study abroad destination for all the right reasons so um before i start off actually i don't want to start off with a presentation immediately if some of you can just let me know in the chat box um have you had a chance to visit dubai have you have you already placed an application with us what stage are you at in this process and i will be happy to guide you accordingly from there um so while i have the chats pouring in i also want to introduce my colleague mr mans who is um so mans and i both work towards applications coming from india which means we will be your first point of contact as soon as you place an application with us of course you will have team shiksha to assist you as well but you can always reach out to us with questions also um the reason that we look after this region is because we are from india as well and we understand the kind of concerns that you might have or that your parents might have um and how close it is to india and how different it is from india so we would you know be very happy to help you out with all of that um i am also expecting two of my colleagues to join in later in the session of course while studying is about the destination itself it is also beneficial for you to know a lot about the programs that you're going to be joining with us and um you know what future opportunities you have ahead to um in terms of your career options um and how exactly to go about with all of that um in all fairness i've been a part of this process myself uh, i studied in middle sex before i started working over here so i know exactly what the admission process is like i know exactly what the student life is like i know what the alumni life is like and i'll be more than happy to share all of that with you and assist you in uh, you know that entire process um so again i will be having my colleagues talk to you about their area of expertise which will be the programs that you are specifically interested in and the career options after that so again in the chat box if i can request and again i can see that there are um a few things coming up in the q and a box um the things that i'm mentioning if you can mention that in the chat box instead just let me know which program you're largely looking at and it's completely okay to not have a fixed idea in your mind at the moment but if you have a, just a broad idea maybe the school that you're interested in just type that out in the chat box so that we know exactly how to tailor this conversation with you ahead um all right so i already see some questions coming in and my colleague mr mars will be there to help you through this entire um question answer part as well i can already see that there are questions about the program availability that we have and um about whether the session is being recorded yes it is so we will be able to um you know you will be able to access all of these uh details even later on we will also be sharing our contact details with you towards the end if you want to get in touch with us directly um for any questions that might come up later on as well um i also see questions about medicine programs about um bachelor's in science and technology 
So um, we do have science and technology programs as well, and we will get into the details of that when we're talking about details that are more program specific. Um, now, if you can please allow me one minute to um, let me just share my screen so that I can have just a presentation, just something, of course, I, I would prefer that this is more interactive so we can discuss on different things as well, but just something for you to look at while um, we discuss your options. So just give me one second, please. All right, I hope my screen is visible to all of you. If someone can just let me know in the chat box if you're able to see this correctly. Yes, it's visible, maybe. It's visible. All right, perfect. So, of course, um, like I said, because we're representing Middlesex University Dubai, I will be talking to you about the university and just the location in general. Um, we are a UK university and we have a branch campus over here in Dubai. And uh, one very big benefit that you get when you study with us is the fact that you get a degree directly from our London campus. Um, irrespective of whether you complete your program here or over there. So I know that we're at a time where we're very close to the intake start date approaching. And if some of you haven't secured your seat already, I'm sure there's a lot of um, you know, um, anxiety about, is this still an option? Is September 22 still an option for me? If not, do I defer my application? Is it the right time to start? Is it not? Um, you know, There's a lot of confusion around that. Let me break that down for you and make it very simple we're still open for September 22. And I'm not just saying that in terms of the admission being open, but also the fact that if most of you are Indian passport holders based in India, coming on a student visa, we do see that the visa process turns around very quickly with Indian passport holders um, with almost 100% success rate. So um, again, of course, there are details that are, there's a whole process to it, but you are still in good time to be able to place an application and join us from the first day of the classes. So our classes start on 19th of September, which means we're approximately three weeks away from starting the classes. Um, there is an option to join in uh, one week late provided there are enough seats, but I wouldn't encourage that so much. Again, just because it's only a one week bracket and it might be too tight. So the first and foremost thing that I want you to know is that there is still a chance for you to join I'm not sure if you're waiting on hearing from other universities or you're just trying to make up, which is the best, make up your decision about what the best university for you might be. But Middlesex is still an option for the September 22 intake. Let's get into details about what exactly we offer and what this, what this university is about and who we are. So like I mentioned, we are a UK university and because you will be studying at the Dubai campus or at least starting off over here, um, you will be benefiting from we have two different campuses within Dubai itself where you will be based in either one of them. Um, we have over 17 years of experience in the Dubai campus itself. We've been running our programs. We've been running over 70 programs in this university. We've, we constantly upgrade our programs, the, the program module content. Um, we introduce new programs over the years, depending on the, the you know, the focus on the market. So um, definitely, you know, this is to show you that we are very up to date with what we are, um, you know, sharing with our students. Um, we have, again, as, as the slide says, you know, we have over 4,000 students. Although internally, I know for a fact that we have over 4,200 students already. And, you know, this is just increasing because like I said, we still have students joining us for the September intake. And this number actually makes us the largest UK university in the region. Um, we also have a five star rating from the KHDA, which is a ministry governing authority over here. So as much as I would want to praise the university from my experience as well, um, you know, there are bodies that do regulate the education that goes on around here, not just from UK, but also locally. And, um, you know, the ratings that we have is just proof of the fact that we deliver what we promise. Um, so here are some details about the university. Um, I do have a few pointers on, uh, you know, what we're offering and every point that you see over here is something that we are going to discuss in detail in the coming slides as well. But this is just for you to take some quick notes if you want to know what we're offering or if you have some questions based on this, you can keep them ready for our coming slides. Um, moving on to the rating that I spoke to you about. So this is also partnered with QS, which is an international um, ranking system. Some of you might be aware of that. So we have the five star rating, which is the highest rating that is offered. And we have been maintaining this rating for quite a few years. And, you know, we, we do plan on um, continuing with that. 
So, you know, just to, to let you know, this is, of course, a rating that is globally recognized that we take into account, but our individual schools that we have, such as the media programs or the law, you know, the, the law school, um, and a lot of other ones of them, you know, they do um, win a lot of awards, even in competitions outside, or, um, you know, through, through different governing authorities respected in their own fields. So here is, again, just a few to name, just to be able to, um, you know, account for what we do. We are also the only English law offering university in the region. So if there's any of you who is looking to study the law programs with us, then definitely this is a university of your choice. We are offering the English law. So you, you can graduate with an LLB honors law program, uh, which we offer for three years. Uh, I will get into details of all the programs that we offer in the coming slides. Like I mentioned, we have two campuses in the region already, which means that uh, we're actually the first university to have two campuses within the same region. Dubai, uh, is, I mean, I know that there are other um, cities that do have multiple campuses across one city, but that's not very common in Dubai. We are the only university offering that to be able to, um, you know, allow you mobility based on where you're located in Dubai. Um, and also because we have been expanding and um, you know we have been trying to enrich the student experience so this is um, you know another thing that we do provide moving on to what the two campuses are so we have one campus in Dubai knowledge park the pictures for which you can see this is actually our main campus it's the oldest campus that we have over here I am currently based in our knowledge park campus and um, you know we have a lot of our programs and classes running over here we are actually also in the process of um, you know, renovating the campus. So you will see certain changes from the picture starting September. Uh, we are expanding within the Knowledge Park campus as well. So you will see a lot of exciting things that are coming up and we're really looking forward to our students attending, uh, you know, visiting us on campus and being able to utilize these facilities. Uh, the second campus that we have is the DIAC campus, as we like to call it, which is short for Dubai International Academic City Campus. So um, this is based in Academic City, and it is a fairly new campus where we started off with certain programs, and we look forward to having more programs join in over there in the coming intakes as well. Uh, moving on to the courses that we offer. So there are three levels of programs that we offer, which include the foundation program, the uh, sorry, the undergraduate program, and the postgraduate program. Um, again, if you can in the chat box, let me know if most of you are looking at an undergraduate or postgraduate level. I will be happy to, um, you know, get into more details of that. Speaking about the foundation program, this is actually a pre-university course, which is um, of a one-year duration which is only required for certain curriculums. If you've studied an Indian State Board or a CBSE or an ISE, then you would most likely not be requiring a foundation program. Um, however, of course, you can place in an application. We can get in touch, review that, and let you know exactly where the eligibility is. But so the foundation course runs for one year where you will be learning some basics about, um, you know, just academic writing and research. And also you will be focusing on the pathway that you plan on continuing your undergraduate in. Uh, moving on to the undergraduate programs that we do offer. So again, we have certain very big schools that we offer um, that have more detailed programs in it, as you can see. So business is one of our biggest schools. Law is one of us, one of our most popular schools, like I mentioned, being the only English uh, law offering university here. Uh, our media program is very active. Um, they run a lot of workshops and competitions and just events that they participate in across the region. Um, our science and technology is a very big school because it includes two major sectors, not just the technology and engineering side of it, but also psychology programs that we see a very big interest in. Uh, we have our very unique art and design programs that have very specific labs and a lot of equipments for you to be able to, um, you know, excel in the field. So we have our graphic design and fashion design program within this. We also have health and education programs for those of you looking at early childhood studies or education studies. Um, I hope most of the things have been cleared so far. If they haven't, please be rest assured we will get to it towards the end of this presentation and you can keep your questions ready for me then. Um, moving on to our postgraduate programs for those of you who have already completed a bachelor's and are looking to further your education in the field, we offer again more or less the same schools. Uh, we have a very big 
MBA uh, program that we run with 11 different pathways that you can choose from. We have, um, I should let you know, however, if you are looking at the MBA course, that we do have one very important entry requirement where we require you to have minimum two years full-time work experience after your graduation to join this. And this is only because the course is structured in a way that we require this of students to be able to, for them to be able to cope up with the program. Um, now, let's say you found that interesting, but you're a fresh graduate. I wouldn't be disappointed at this stage. We do have a lot of programs that are structured on the management side, but they're more specifically designed for fresh graduates, like the business programs mentioned on top. Um, again, I would be happy to discuss individual programs based on your interests, but keep letting that come across in the chat box. Um, we also have, again, law programs, health and education programs. We've included a new pathway at this intake, actually, with our MA education field, as you can see. And again, we continue to run this program in science and technology as well. Um, I'm just trying to give a brief to be able to accommodate the interests of all our students, but I'm sure Mr. Maas and, um, you know, either panelists will be able to answer to your questions in detail as well. Moving on to the scholarships and grants, and I know that this is very big for a lot of students, especially coming in from an international region, um, you know, where you're, you're not just checking for the tuition fees, but you're checking conversion rates, you're checking visa charges, you're checking accommodation, and the, there's a lot more to consider than just your college. Um, we understand that. And um, that's why we have specific international study grants for students coming from India. So the scholarships that you see are kind of considered as a baseline scholarship that we do provide to students who are coming from the Indian subcontinent. Um, if you, are, once we review your application, if there is a possibility for some sort of um, upgrade, then we will be happy to offer that, but you can consider this as something that you are almost certain to receive. Um, of course, once we've seen your application, I can give you an exact breakdown as well, but that is a more focused conversation that we can have at a later stage. Um, moving on to academic scholarships. So since most of you already would be receiving a 25 or a 35% scholarship, um, you know, we also have um, certain academic scholarship upgrades that are possible, like I mentioned, and I've just drawn out a table for you to be able to see um, what those criteria are if you fall under this. I know that it only mentions British curriculum over here, but we also do offer that for certain CBSE and state board curriculums as well. So at any point, if you see something, you know, I mean, you, you don't notice it over bit here, but you have a question, is this possible for me, even though my profile looks slightly different from what you're showing, ask the question, show me your application, and we will discuss that in detail for sure. Um, now, moving on to the student accommodation, I am, um, again, very certain that most of you would require an accommodation to stay as well, and, you know, just looking for, for um, sharing accommodations outside might be an option, but it would be more comfortable to have a student accommodation that is partnered with the university itself. So we've partnered with the Marriott Dubai, which is located near Dubai International Academic City, um, which means that if you have your classes in the academic city campus, you're already living only about five minutes away from there. So that would be a very convenient option. If you are studying at the Knowledge Park campus, it's still not an issue if you're, if you're based a little far away because we do have shuttle buses that run every hour and this is inclusive in your rent already. So you know, you're not paying anything extra for this, which means your transport is covered, your living space is covered. There are a lot of facilities that are covered as mentioned on the side. Um, so you know, you're going to be benefiting from a whole experience and not just the room that is there. Um, just to give you an idea, um, there are a few, um, just, you know, the prices mentioned for some of, and some of the pictures for our rooms. Um, of course, you know, with the conversion, we, you know, we can discuss the details for that. These are the charges per month. Um, and if you, again, this is just a service that we offer, so it's not a mandatory thing. Um, however, we do see most of our students going for this, given the facilities that are provided. Aside from this, there is also complimentary airport pickup for if you're staying at our accommodation, we would be able to have you join, um, you know, we would be able to have the transportation from the airport covered as well. Moving on to student visas. So um, again, another thing that a lot of you might require is assistance with the student visa. We have a separate student visa department to help you out with this. Um, it does come at an extra cost. I 
Again, this is something if you require it, then we would be happy to assist you with that. But this is a whole package inclusive of everything that is mandatory for you to be a student at uh, just anywhere in Dubai. So this includes the visa processing charges, the Emirates ID, which is a local residence card over here. It includes med medical insurance, which is mandatory over here as well and a visa deposit, which can be refunded to you um, at the end when we're canceling your visa, um, minus any cancellation charges. So this is just an overall package that has been mentioned. Um, again, it's a service that we do offer, and because we have a separate department that's dedicated to it, you know, you will always have a point of contact for any questions, any updates that you might require. One thing that I do want to mention at this stage, I know that, um, again, because we're so close to the intake, it might seem like there will be a very big crush. Will my admission come through in time? Will my offer letter come through in time? If my offer letter comes through and I start the visa process, how am I supposed to get an approval in just a matter of a few weeks? Again, Dubai has a very quick turnaround with this, specifically if it's student visas coming from an established university like ours. Um, we have a visa department that is constantly dedicated and constantly in touch with the right people in the embassy to be able to facilitate this very smoothly and very quickly, which means that you are still in time to be able to receive a visa and arrive here in the September intake itself. Um, moving on to some other services that we offer and here now I'm going to move a little bit to the fun side of it. Um, we've spoken about fees, we've spoken about scholarships and the money that you're you're spending, but here's everything that you're going to utilize from it. We have uh, something that we call Teen Middlesex. Um, this is basically inclusive of our cultural and sports clubs, and I will get into the details of what the list for that is in the coming slides. Um, but we have a lot of extracurricular activities that we really encourage our students to take part in, um, not just you know to be able to um, take a break and freshen up, but also because each of these clubs are student-led. So if you're looking at um, joining any of these from a leadership perspective, maybe you want to lead a club towards, uh, you know, your second or third year, then that is a possibility. And in fact, I personally highly recommend that you do that because it builds your, your profile, um, your experience, and just, just your personality as a whole to a very, very large extent. This is also a fantastic way for all of our students to network with each other, where you're meeting students who have similar interests, who are um, you know, working towards the same kind of goals and the same kind of passion. And it's, it's a time where you can meet them outside just your classroom study zone. Um, so we, we organize a lot of events and you're going to see the buzz for that happening already as soon as you um, start attending your classes from September. You're going to see a lot of our student volunteers around. You're going to see um, activities happening in, in every corner, in every block, and uh, you'll, you'll be able to, uh, you know, see what more you can do with this. So here's a list of the social clubs that we offer. You don't have to be an expert in any of them to join them. I, you know, you could be an expert in them and we could take you ahead in competitions that we have, or you could be someone who's just starting to, um, you know, build their interest in the field. And of course, there will be training sessions, there can be um, just events that you can participate in or volunteer to be at. If you have a club that you don't see on this list, but you are interested in that, then you do have the chance of speaking to our student activities team to start a whole new club. I'll be very honest, when I started my undergraduate, my undergraduate studies over here, there were around seven social clubs that existed at that time. Um, right now we have 17, uh, you know, over uh, the span of these years because students have come across, we have noticed that there, there is an interest in certain fields. Some students have come across and said, I want to start this club. I have these friends, I have these people interested and we've gone ahead and done that. So again, if you want to start something new as well, that is always welcome. The same thing goes with our sports clubs as well. Um, we again started off with a fewer number, but we keep building them. Rugby is one of the latest sports that we have uh, started. And again, if you see something new, you can. Um, we also, again, do not require you to be a professional in any of um, Aside from this, now the different services that we also offer is we have a center for academic success where um, we have, uh, you know, we have a lot of workshops that are organized, a lot of drop-in sessions that can support you in everything based on your academic side. 
we do understand that you're coming from a different country. You've studied a different curriculum. Maybe you've studied the same thing, but it's still a new area for you and you wish to seek some sort of guidance on um, how do I go about with my assignments? How do I plan them better? How do I preference better? How do I score better in general? So we have a whole department dedicated to assist you with just that. And I know I keep mentioning department in almost every slide. This, this is actually just to imply and to let you know that we do have um, experts in the field who handle this matter. They, they are dedicated to only this task because they are the experts at it and they will be there to help you relentlessly through your student experience. Um, so we, again, like I mentioned, they organize workshops through the class where you can always go and visit them with any questions that you have. Um, they also actually assist with a lot more than that. So anybody who has any learning disability, um, we will be able to support with that as well. We do provide emotional and mental well-being um, support to students also. Again, we understand you're traveling from a different country. It can be a little more daunting than just looking at your education. Um, so you will have support with that also. If you're under 18, then we do have a welfare for under 18 students and you're always welcome to talk to um, all of our representatives from the CAS department to be able to seek support on this. Moving on to a very, very important what you are looking at. This is about the careers and employability services. Um, we actually do have, again, another department that is dedicated towards assisting you with this. Because we've been here for nearly 17 years, we've established our industry connections through the years. And today we stand at having over 600 industry partners um, you know, overall from all different schools in the business field, in the IT field, and um, whatnot. So you will always have uh, the option to reach out to our careers department. They also organize frequent workshops. They also organize career days at the end of every year where you have a chance to connect with, um, you know, potential employers. And um, you will also be able to reach out to them on a one-on-one -on -one basis and request for any kind of assistance in terms of maybe CV reviewing, mock interviews, just finding the right kind of opportunities for you, you will have support from them. Um, here's a list of the services that they do offer. And um, of course, if you have anything more that you require, it's always worth going to them and asking them about this. I can personally vouch for the support that they've given. I have um, been able to get a lot of internships through my student life through their support. So um, I know for a fact that they will be there to support you. Uh, this is just a few industry partners that we've put on for you to see. Of course, this is just like I mentioned, because there are over 600 partners, we couldn't possibly put all of them. This is just the name of a few big ones that you might have heard of, um, just for you to see. Um, and we do have these tie-ups where when they do have openings, they do notify us and the careers department will notify all of our students in as well. Uh, another thing that I do want to mention over here is that you are not only eligible to receive the services of the careers department while you're a student over here. As an alumni, you can always come back and say, I'm a Middlesex alumni, I require support from the careers team and finding whatever it is that you're looking for, and they will still be there to help you. So this is a very big, um, you know, this is a department that we very, very, very heavily rely on and a department that supports us all throughout. Um, so now that you know everything that we offer, we know everything that, um, you know, everything that you would, what your student life would look like, what your living would look like, what your expenses would look like. If you are interested in joining us, what next? You're, I've been telling you that your process can be speedy. I've been telling you that uh, we're still open for September, but how do you join us for September? Here is how. We have a very simple five-step application process. Now, this application process is absolutely free of cost. Um, it is also, we don't have an application admission fee. We don't have, um, you know, hidden registration charges. So, um, you know, it, you are recommended to go online and um, place an application with us through the link that is mentioned over here. Um, you also have, one, once you've placed your application, one of the counselors will review it. Again, if you're coming from India, it would most likely come either through me or my colleague, Mr. Maz, who's also on this session. We will be reviewing your application and we will get back to you with a response within 48 hours. Um, if you are eligible to join us, then you can have an offer letter straight away. If there is anything pending or if, if there is further clarification required, you will still have communication from us almost immediately. 
So you can use that as a point of contact to build with any questions that you have, and we can speed this process where um, you know, we can have your admission cleared at the earliest. Um, just a list of the documents that we do require. So there are certain documents in terms of your high school, your undergraduate results. Um, we have English language requirements, but because you're coming from an Indian curriculum, there are certain cases where we can make exemptions. We can let you know on the basis of your application for that. Um, in terms of other requirements, we do require some general passport, um, your letter of recommendation, personal statement. So this, this is why we say that these are the documents required. Required. These aren't documents that are mandatory to be placed on the day on the second that you place your application. You can submit the application with whichever one of these documents that you have, and we will still give you an offer letter that will mention the pending documents, and you can keep reverting back to us with the documents as and when they're ready. So, um, and of course, this offer letter will also mention the scholarships that you're eligible for. So you will have a lot of details about what your admission will look like further at this stage. Now, once you've placed the application, what happens is you've had conversations with us back and forth, you've cleared all of your doubts, and now you're ready to secure your seat with us. Securing your seat would mean that you need to make an initial payment of 3,000 dirhams only. Now, this 3,000 is not an admission fee. I told you it was free of cost, and it still is. This 3,000 is adjusted in your tuition fees in the next installments that you have. So this is just kind of like making a payment early on to, to say that you will be joining us. Um, once you've secured your seat and sent us all of the documents that the offer letter mentions, we can go ahead and start your visa process, which, like I said, would take a, around two weeks to arrive. And you can book your accommodation, you can book your place online with us. The visa process is also completely online. You can fill in the forms online, um, stay in touch with our visa department through emails or phone calls. Um, you can book your accommodation through our website and stay in touch with our accommodation in charge through WhatsApp as well. So all of this can be sorted before you even arrive on campus, which means that before you travel, you have your admission cleared, your stay cleared, your travel, your insurance, your everything is already sorted and you don't have anything to worry about when you come here. Like I mentioned, we can also offer complimentary airport pickup services, which means that commute is again, not something that you have to worry about. Um, again, through this entire process, right from today when we're speaking up until when you book your accommodation and fly in, um, and even after that when you're coming with your documentations on campus, you will always have the support of your admission counselor, of me, of Mr. Maz, um, through the entire process with, with any questions that you might have. Um, Moving on, so uh, this was about it in terms of, uh, you know, everything that we do offer. If you do have any questions for me or any, I, I know that there was a lot going on in the chat box. I just wasn't able to get to that because I was presenting at that moment. Um, but if you do have any questions at this stage, please feel free to ask them if they haven't been answered already. And um, I will be happy to have an individual discussion. I can see uh, Mr. Philip is on the event as well. I'm not sure if there's something that you wanted to add on. Uh, so thank you so much, Megisha, uh, for this amazing informative session about the university. And yeah, and now it's a Q&A uh, part where we you know, give a chance to our participants where they can ask questions there directly. So yes, we have Prince um, Philip uh, with us and I guess he wants to go ahead with our first query. So Prince uh, Philip, if you're there, please go ahead with your query. So, um, Mr. Philip is actually um, one of the, sorry. Panel. Can, yeah. So, Mr. Philip is actually from Middlesex University as well. But if there's anything that he wants to add on to the session, I'm sure he will be adding his inputs, um, you know, at a later stage if, if anything regarding his expertise is asked. Uh, but if there's anybody else who has a question. Oh, yes. Uh, we can definitely see more hands over the hands up. So we have Doc Drashti. Uh, so if you're here with us, go with your query, Drashti. Uh, sir, today I got, uh, yesterday I got the mail from your side, but I didn't know about this one, which course I applied. So can you just give me the information in which course I applied? Okay. Rikisha, you want to take this? 
All right, Drashti, um, I'm not sure if you've placed an application with us already. If you have, if you can just privately send me your application reference number, you can send this either to me or through Mars, and um, we will have a look at it and we can get back to you. Okay, ma'am. And, and if you haven't placed an application, then towards the end of this webinar, I'm sure um, Team Shiksha will be connecting with you as well, and you will then have resources to start your application process as well. Okay, ma'am. And the one another question is still there. The how to apply about the scholarship I got through in my bachelor seventy percentage. Okay. Overall, it's a 60, 62 percentage. So, what is the scholarship criteria for bachelor students? So, um, here's an interesting thing that I am not sure if I mentioned through um, the presentation. You will not really be required to place a separate application for scholarships. So I know that I've mentioned that you have certain international study grants, you have certain academic excellence scholarships. We also have early enrollment grants in place. We have university starter grants. So all of these can be applied to you once we've reviewed the application. Uh, we automatically check what scholarships you're eligible for, and we directly put that onto your application. So when you receive an offer letter, you will already have the confirmed scholarship list for you. So you don't have to put in two different applications accordingly. Okay, and which exam you are like uh, accepting IELTS or PTE? So we actually offer three, I mean, we accept three different English proficiency exams. You could give either an IELTS or you could give uh, a TOEFL exam or you could give uh, a PTE as well. We do have minimum scores for them. But again, if you've done maybe a CBSC or a state board in your high school, then maybe you wouldn't even need to give an extra English test. So, um, okay, since I have seeing, the international board. So, have you which international board have you done your IB? Uh, there was international board, and the, I completed my 10th standard in the CBAC curriculum. All right, sorry, I'm not able to catch what you've done in your grade 12. Which board is that? There was international board. So, I'm, so I'm not sure if I'm able to hear that correctly, but if you've done what I would recommend, and this is not just for Trashti, but for everyone, there are certain curriculums where we can make an exemption for your English language requirements if you have a certain grade in your um, English in grade 12. So it's worth to put that onto the application. We will review it, and if there is an additional test required, we'll let you know, but maybe you might not even require it. I know, sir. I do not okay. uh, you answer it. Okay, perfect. So next we have Sony with us. So Sony, if you're there, please ask your question. Hi, can you able to hear me? Yeah, yes, you are. Hi, good evening. Uh, like the same question I'm going to ask is like, uh, it's based on the English uh, condition, like uh, whether it is mandatory to write the IELTS score, IELTS exam. So if it is like a how much score we should uh, able to get in order to crack for that admission. So like I mentioned, it is, mandatory for you to show some proof of English language proficiency, but this might, need not necessarily be through an IELTS exam. Um, you could show us your high school results and if we can give you an exemption from giving further English tests, then we will. However, mm -hmm. if you are still asked to give an English exam, then for IELTS, depending on the program, depending on the level of the program that you're coming for, we can discuss the, um, you know, the minimum criteria as well. Are you looking at our undergraduate or our postgraduate programs? Uh, no, like uh, I'm looking for a postgraduate in a program management course. Like I've, uh, I have already completed three years of experience in information technology field. And uh, like uh, I completed my higher studies in state board with a uh, ninety-three percentage in English exam, so it is like an exception, or uh, it is uh, necessary to mention it in application, or can I get it? Uh, like that was my question. So you'll have to mention it, and I will have to check your grade twelve high school results in English. Mm -hmm. Um, if you do require an IELTS, however, we will need you to have a minimum six point five or above. Again, we might be able to exempt that based on your um, English scores in grade 12. Okay, like where exactly we need to mention it? Uh, is there any personal con uh, contact or uh, whether we need you to can, mention? You can do that on the application. So like I mentioned, the application is completely free of cost. And the reason that it is free of cost is because before mm -hmm. we start getting into admission details, we first need 
um, to be able to see everything that you're offering, everything that um, you know you have already done, so that we can review it, let you know if you're eligible, and then let you know everything that we're offering. So when you're placing the application, just mention um, your English scores, attach the high school mark sheets if you have them ready, and then we'll be able to give you a confirmation. Okay, thank you. And one more last question is like, uh, uh, like some of the documents need to be get, like for example, letter of recommendation. So for uh, while submitting the application itself it is necessary to submit the letter of uh, recommendation or in final stage we can submit it uh, later yeah so as i mentioned you can initially start your application with minimal documents um but mm -hmm. once we do get towards the stages of uh, you know securing your seat having the enrollment uh, we will need to make sure that all of the documents that are mentioned on your offer letter are submitted so initially you can place it without that and then you can already start the process of arranging the recommendation letters which means that maybe in the next month or so you can have them arranged and we can still you know wait on uh, having that sent across okay okay thank you and uh, sorry for the uh, my last question is like uh, after completing graduation uh, can we uh, uh, can we have work placement in dubai or uh, uh, we can uh, return to india itself so whether we have that work Visa, work permit visa? So that would be a personal choice. We do have, like I mentioned, we have a careers department that can support you with finding opportunities over here. Um, and if you do find an opportunity over here and wish to stay even after you've completed your studies, then you can always request companies for an employment visa, which is fairly easy in Dubai. Um, Dubai actually, or UAE as a country, does not have um, the concept of a post-study work visa, because mm -hmm. like I mentioned, it's the employment visas that are more commonly done over here. So as soon as you've landed yourself a job, you can ask the company for that. Um, but we do have a lot of students who come in from other countries and then stay back in Dubai because they found a work or, you know, they, they found their, um, their path ahead after graduation in Dubai itself. So that is an option. If, however, you want to go back to India or to any other country, the degree that you receive, like I said, is uh, issued directly from our London campus. And this is a globally recognized degree, which means that you can take this across the globe and still have it accepted. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for all this. Answer. Thank you. Thank you, Megesha, for answering that. And now we have Janak with us. So Janak, if you're here, please go ahead with the query. Hi, good evening, everyone. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, you are. Yeah, actually, my query is regarding the undergraduate program. Do we have any undergraduate program for data science or artificial intelligence? So we do have uh, programs in, so in terms of the science and technology undergraduate courses, we do offer two engineering programs. We've actually newly introduced a program in cybersecurity. Um, so you could be looking at that program as well. Um, apart from that, having a data science or artificial intelligence specifically as the course title is something that we do at the postgrad level because it's more specific. However, your pathway to becoming a data analyst or, um, you know, being an expert in artificial intelligence would mean that you start off with um, a bachelor's of science in maybe IT and maybe the cybersecurity program that we have. Um, so it's cybersecurity and digital forensics. That's the newly introduced program that we have. So this would be your pathway through it, which means we will be touching those concepts, but it would not be a program title. And uh, after clearing undergrads at, uh, at the Dubai campus, can we have the chance for the masters in any of your other campus, like in Europe or somewhere? Absolutely, you do have that chance. In fact, even through your undergraduate program, if you wish to take a transfer to our London campus, that is a possibility depending on the program that you're doing. Um, however, if you complete your course over here, like I mentioned, it is a globally recognized degree. If you're going to Middlesex London itself, definitely you can take your degree over there. If you're going to some other university that's not Middlesex, but it's in the UK, again, it would be recognized. Even if it's outside UK, most of the universities will recognize this degree. Thank you, Janik, for your question. And now we have Jeffrey with us. So Jeffrey, if you're here, please go ahead with the query. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, you are audible. First of all, thank you for this opportunity that we can know a lot about the Middlesex University. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Here I am uh, going to regarding about my MBA program. Uh, I am uh, in this year only I have completed my BCom in uh, uh, Tamil Nadu in India. So now I am planning to do my MBA courses uh, in Middlesex University in a uh, MBA Logistics and Supply Chain Management. Uh, can I get uh, uh, 
can i get a place opportunity employment so um we have a careers department who will be able to assist but over here actually i would like to point out that if you've completed your bcom just this year then like i mentioned unfortunately getting into the mba program would not be a possibility because we have a minimum 2 year work experience requirement for mba and jeffrey this is only because your assignments for mba will be structured in a way that we require you to apply the knowledge that you've had through your full time work experience into the course and the other way around so it's not something that um you know i, I wouldn't be very disheartened about not being able to join mba because we do teach management and uh, similar subjects we have a course called ma in international business management where again it's very very similar to our mba program but it's more it, it's specifically designed for fresh graduates so unfortunately looking at the mba is not something that we can do at the moment but we can look at other business based courses that will teach you more or less the same things uh, it's just that their assignments are are structured in a way that you don't necessarily have to reflect on a work experience and you can do this as a fresh graduate um once you graduate from an maib ma in international business management or an mba or some other business program um you will still have the option to be able to look for um employability options in dubai through the help of our careers department okay ma'am uh, is uh, doing mba in your university so work experience is uh, mandate or uh, necessary ma'am it's a mandatory requirement but uh, uh, while gaining a uh... work experience and after that i have to study is uh, advantage are doing first mba and after that are going for work is advantage ma so um the thing is your mba is just a, it's a post graduate degree i know that a lot of students um or not just students actually a lot of people have this idea that maybe an mba is um a higher level qualification than an ma or an msc in reality that's really not the matter they are all post graduate programs they're just structured differently they just focus on different areas so um and again let's remember that we're talking about this in terms of the classification from uk which is why i'm not sure if you've noticed but we do have um one of our marketing programs in the post graduate level was actually an msc degree so that's not the you're learning a scientific aspect of it it's just that that's how it is classified in the uk system so even if you graduate with an ma in international business management you still have the opportunity is open for you because you've still completed a post graduate degree you can always come back and do an mba if you wish to after you've done your two years work experience but if if what you're looking at is a more um you know management and more more specific into the pathway that you're looking at but doing mba is more advantage for employment or a ma is a uh, advantage of uh, employment ma'am again like i mentioned with employment your opportunities are It, it would be the same that any other post graduate um any student who completes post graduate would receive so that way it would be the same the field that you're looking at would be different depending on the course that you do if i take a mba logistics means uh, how it will be ma'am so of course then you're specializing you're doing you're doing a lot of common management modules and you will be specializing in the logistics field um however like i mentioned if it's just the management that you're focusing on then you can get into that using our ma in international management program as well that means as uh, as you know work experience is not mandatory uh, i can join for this uh, upcoming january intake uh, sharma no it is a mandate for the mba program it's not a mandate for the other business programs so for the ma in international business management it's not mandatory you can join that this september itself for mba it is mandate for work experience right ma okay ma'am if i how many years i have to work for join an mba ma'am it should be a two year full time work experience after you've completed your graduation okay ma'am if i am working in two year two years in airport ground stuff it is okay for joining mba ma'am it should be in a professional or business environment so yes you can submit your cv and that can be reviewed no i cannot get ma'am uh, can i work in airport ground stuff or doing in mba in our college so you can work in any professional or business setting and mention that onto your cv and we would application because no application will ever be judged on just one aspect of the um, application so we will be looking at everything as a whole and we will check um, if you're eligible or not okay ma'am that means it uh, from day, this day onwards two years i have to work and that after i have to do mba in uh, uh, our university am i right ma'am 
correct, yes. Okay, ma'am. Is there any uh, IELTS marker required for this, ma'am? So I think I've answered this uh, before. We do have English proficiency requirements, but we'll let but you. But I have scored eighty-three in uh, to, uh, my uh, IELTS secondary school. That is enough for uh, IELTS is mandated, ma'am. Eighty-three in what? Sorry. English. What curriculum did you study in your high school? Matriculation school. From which state? Uh, from uh, Tamil Nadu, ma'am. So you've done the Tamil Nadu State Board. In yeah, that case. In that case, you wouldn't need to give an IELTS exam because you have eighty-three, which is um, an acceptable score to be able to accept. Okay, ma'am. But uh, job placement will be under percentage in our university, right, ma'am? You will have the support of our careers department. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your patience and your questions. No problem, Jeffrey. Thank you, Jeffrey, for all these questions. And now we are left with one more attendee who wants to talk to you directly. With Anshi, if you're here with us, please go ahead with the query. Um, hi, can you hear me? Yes, you're audible. Hi, Mrigesh. I start the correct pronunciation. That is the absolutely correct pronunciation. Hi, with Anshi. How are you? <laughs> all right. I I'm fine. How are you? I'm good as well. Thank you. All right, I think it might backfire, but I have to say it. You're absolutely gorgeous, Megisha. <laughs> Thank you so much. Anyway, coming back to my question, I had a question related to the scholarships and grants that are given by the university. So, are all of them merit based, or some of them are need based as well? Sorry, need based. Need based, as in, um, if I'm not able to afford. the entire tuition for oh, need based okay yeah yeah um no so so there are there are different categories of scholarships what mm -hmm. i've highlighted through the presentation was an international study fund which you would be eligible for just going by the fact that you're an international student coming from india so just that makes you eligible for a certain level of scholarship um however we do have academic scholarships as well so what what happens with anshi is that because we have so many different scholarships there are sports scholarships in picture as well um there are certain yeah you know there, there's a whole classification of scholarships that we have but what we apply for you would be the highest one that's possible and we do this automatically based on uh, the review of your application so you could get an international study grant but if you are eligible for a higher grant because let's say your final results were better then we'd give you an academic scholarship instead let's say that you have been playing some sports and your your sports scholarship turns out to be higher than either of the two that i just mentioned then we'd award a sports scholarship to you so it depends on that the reason that i've mentioned just two or three grants through the presentation is because these are most commonly the most Uh, they're, they're most commonly the higher grants. That's why we see more students mm -hmm. availing these, um, and because that's specific to your region as well. Because you're coming from, sorry, from India, then that is a baseline grant. But we don't have specific financial aid scholarships as such. It would depend on the other criteria that we have. All right, all right. Thank you so much. No worries, Vidanshi. Thank you, Vidanshi. And with this, we come to end of this session. And thank you, Mrigisha and Maz and Philip, all of you, for such a amazing webinar. And um, especially Maz for handling all these questions in the Q and A box. And um, Justin, he actually got logged out in the middle of the session. He yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I kind of see that. I, I'm glad he was of help as well. But still, I, as far as you can see, he has already covered almost more than twenty questions uh, of our, you know, participants. So it's a great number. And don't you worry. In case if your question still not answered, uh, we will be, you know, reaching out to you um, via my email, and you guys will be in connect with directly to the Middlesex University, or you can definitely reach out to Shiksha Counseling Team. So thank we're we're constantly in touch with Shiksha as well. Um, they keep forwarding um questions of students, and uh, you know any any interest that you show can be forwarded to them. If you want to reach to us directly as well, you can always visit our website and email the admissions department, and we will be happy to help you. Definitely, and thanks again to all the panelists from the Middlesex University, and thank you all the participants for making this session interesting. Uh, I hope you all have all have a good day and. Bye bye. Thank you for joining and have a lovely evening everyone. Bye bye. Bye everyone.